Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Jamie Photography. Um, what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to show you how to specifically light lanterns. I've noticed uh, where people have been working uh, to do their first day to nights and developing their skills with day to nights that the lanterns don't always look very natural. Uh, so what I'd like to do is focus specifically on just how to light a lantern and, uh, and, and how to do the light that comes from the lantern. So I shot this uh, picture at Mont Saint Michel uh, a few weeks ago. Um, I had a great time there. Uh, I took this picture specifically so I could focus on lighting a lantern and show you how to do it. So we're going to take this picture and we're going to develop it through the day to night technique um, into this, this picture here. Uh, and I can show you exactly how we how we've done that. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So here we go. Let's uh, do a detailed day to night on how uh, a lantern should be illuminated and the area around it uh, would be illuminated. So um, so let's get started. So this is this is the this is the scene. Um, I've, I've balanced a little bit the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, just to to get it to a, a sort of neutral uh, level. And as you can see, the um, histogram is pretty well spread out, so it's looking pretty good. So first thing we're going to do, as always, is we're just going to dim dim the scene as though it was dark. So I'm going to go to minus one and a quarter stops here, roughly. Um, and then we're going to relight the whole scene using um, radial and gradient filters. So I'm going to go into mask. I'm going to select um, a radial gradient and I'm going to place that slightly larger than the lantern over the lantern, just like that. And then I'm going to bring the exposure up to pretty well 100% um, so that that's illuminated. Then the technique that I think everybody's starting to see now that I like to use is the uh, subtract brush tool. Now I'm going to zoom in slightly onto this lantern so we're a bit we're a little bit closer. Uh, using the space key to hold down and move then with the left mouse you can move the screen around. So we only want the inside of this lantern lit so the brush is a, a negative brush because we're using it as subtraction and what we're going to do is have the feather at zero and the flow at 100. So it's going to take away everything that the radial filter um, has provided. So we mustn't paint on the, the main lantern area, but we will paint round. So I'm going to click once and then hold down the shift key to, to get a straight line to the next position. So I'm going to click to there and the same again, hold down the shift key, click to that point. I'm going to re-click now on the edge of that. Uh, on the edge of the lantern frame there and just overlap slightly shift click again if you don't overlap slightly what you'll end up with is is a, a very fine halo on the edge so you just need to overlap slightly each time shift and click so fresh click and then shift and click and then fresh click shift and click just to get us around the lantern and then we can make the brush bigger. You can do that by wheeling your mouse or by using the square brackets next to the return key. And I'm just going to paint around to remove the remainder of that um, radial radial filter. I'm going to zoom out just, just to make sure I've cleared it. Um, so here we go. And you can hover over the mask and that will just over here on the right and that will just show you what what is remaining of the mask there's a little tiny bit of red to the top so i'm just going to go around the outside again just to be sure i've got rid of everything so zooming back in so that's the first radio filter um i'm, I'm still going to subtract and make the brush a little bit smaller i'm just going to subtract the framework here because it's quite bright there so i'm just going to click at the top with a smaller brush and click at the bottom and uh, and that will just just take that that darkness out put the darkness back in to where the light hasn't hasn't gone now i'm going to right click on this mask and i'm going to duplicate the mask so all of the subtractions that we did remain in place but this time what i'm going to do 
is um, I'm going to reduce the brightness and I'm going to clicking on the field the filter this new filter that I've duplicated I'm going to make it much smaller so it comes in the center of the lantern as though it's actually the the, the light bulb the, the lamp that's in there so so it would give you a, a much brighter center like this so it works quite well so I'm just going to subtract again a brush just to run along that edge a little bit tighter because I can see it's it's a little bit illuminated there so clicking once holding down the shift key clicking again just make sure that's, that's not that's not too bad so um, yeah so that that looks that looks pretty good um, this isn't this is a modern lamp although it's an old style lantern um, it's been modified electric and and what you have up in the top here is a is a low energy light bulb uh, that's lighting down through a diffuser into this area but what we're going to do is make it look like the old days where either it had a gas mantle or or it actually had an early electric light in the center so so i'm pretty happy with that i'm going to come out and now the land the, the lantern itself is going to click done so you can see the lantern is illuminated now one of the things i notice that people do when when uh when they do it themselves is I, I do suggest sometimes to add a little bit of yellow in this case the, the glass was already quite yellow so I'm not going to add any more yellow but I, I, I think people tend to use too much temperature increase too much yellow because a tungsten lamp does have a yellow tinge but in contrast to the area or the sky or the the, the, the surroundings it isn't as as yellow or orange as we might think it is um, up close on its own it is so so what I'm going to do now is going to light the wall and the ground to show how this, this lantern would light this area. So we're going to go back into masks. We're going to create a new mask and we're going to go into radial gradient again. And I'm going to pull a radial that, that we're going to use to light this wall. Now, it has to be level. This is really important that you understand. It has to be level with where the light would actually hit the wall, where this frame is and level with the actual lamp itself. So when you place it in, it has to go on that metal frame and at the same height. Really, really important that we, we do that. And I'm just gonna bring the exposure up so we can see. Now, it, it's still a bit high because the lamp would, would be coming down slightly. The, the light energy would be coming down. So I'm actually gonna bring it down just slightly to that, that position there. I'm gonna make it a little, little bit wider, not too wide. And I will add a little bit of yellow because of the yellow orange of this this lamp. I'm going to add some temp just to give it a little bit. But importantly, you must add some some magenta if you see this orange. Otherwise, you just get a yellow hue. So we're going to add in a little bit of magenta. There we go. Just just to balance that color off. Now, there's a couple of important things we need to do to this this radial gradient here. Firstly, the light is not going to go very much higher than than the frame of the lamp top of the lamp here so this light bulb the bottom of the light bulb is going to be here so you can draw a line up would suggest that the light's not going to go much higher than this so what we're going to do is we're going to subtract from this radial gradient a brush but this time we're going to add in 100 percent feather and 50 percent flow and the reason for that is we, do, we want to create making my brush bigger there using my my mouse we want to create a diffused edge as though the the lamp itself was was effectively diffusing the light so it wasn't lighting under the gutter i'm now going to go back and remove the feather and remove and put the flow back to 100 percent just to fill in this top area make sure we've got no radial gradient at the top so that's the first thing so that looks quite quite natural the second thing is now we're on feather zero and flow 100 is this corner that you can see here the lamp is is further in to the scene so therefore it would cast a shadow on this corner but it would light the edge of this wall as it's doing here so what we need to do is we need to remove that that light from that area there so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in so we we've got the detail holding down the space bar and i'm going to take a small brush in this corner just here on that edge and i'm going to click once i'm going to move to the top using the space bar on the mouse 
and I'm, I'm going to hold down the shift key and along that edge I'm going to put that line in so what you can see now is is that brush has sub subtracted I can make my brush slightly bigger because well, I'm keen to have a corner down here so I'm just going to come up there and go along the top of this wall as well just make sure that's looking okay there and then I'm going to make the brush I can make the brush slightly bigger each time to stay within the limits of of what I've already done so holding down the shift key the straight so now I can make the brush bigger again click once hold down the shift key and click again and then I'm just going to paint out from there big brush now to get rid of that last last bit hold down the shift key there we go so I'll zoom out so we've actually created oops there we go we've actually created the um the shadow relief on that on that edge there and we've we've illuminated the wall down this way a little bit so you can always move if you think you, you need to go a bit lower you can always move a bit lower the the mask uh, subtractions you've made will stay there there's no problem with that and we can also also come back later to make this brighter or darker to to make it look how we want so i'm happy with that what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh duplicate this mask and i'm going to select it and i'm going to pull it down to the ground and i'm going to sweep it around so now it's got to go underneath the lamp so a good way of looking at it is there's the bracket so there's the position on the wall so therefore coming out from there it will be just about there is where the directly underneath and you can check it's directly underneath by moving the circle up to make sure it's centered with the lamp and then you're going to put that in there so now it's a bit bright on the ground so i'm going to bring that back a little bit and i'm going to give it a little bit more yellow and a little bit more magenta just to balance that color off in fact a bit less magenta there just to to get it as i as i'd like to see it so that's make it a little bit wider i might even tilt it slightly just to break up the the angle so as you can see we now have the lamp light on the wall and it, and it drops away in brightness as you get further away from the lamp and then of course directly under the lamp you're going to get a nice pool of light um we probably want to remove a little bit of this on the wall because the lamp itself is only going to really come over to this area here so we're going to subtract a brush I'm going to put the feather at 100 percent i'm going to leave the flow at 100 percent because i'm literally just going to wash that away over here like that so we've got that darkened area yeah looking good so what i'm also going to do now is i'm going to duplicate again this 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 one i'm going to click on it highlight it i'm going to move it over to the wall the the, the uh the wall the old stone wall over here because you're going to still get some light so following that line across coming up it's going to be about there it's going to be uh, shorter and longer it will of course go up higher because it's further away here so we can go a little bit higher with that um it looks okay now it'd be a lot less brighter brighter because it's much further away um with distance the you square the brightness so effectively you you root the, the brightness so for twice the distance you have uh, four times less less light so we just need to bring that back bring back the color slightly not too much there we go and we've got a a little bit of light hitting the other side over here um might even bring that make that a little bit smaller just just bring that light back just a little bit so so that 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 would be how we would light using a lantern uh, directly in area however there's a little trick with all of these uh little radial gradients is we've got the levels where we think with, that we want them to be i might even choose to to drop this one just a little bit back not too much and drop this one back as well just a little bit just so it looks very natural and as and as i say when i look at other people who who are trialing this for the first time or or, or developing their skills with day to night there's a tendency for these pools of light to be too bright and too small i'll give you an example um i often see uh I often see this this with that extra yellow that we don't really need okay and it doesn't really look it doesn't really look natural 
So what, what, what we need to do is ensure that we've got a big pool of light. Just going to bring that down just a little bit so it looks like it's nice there. Now, the trick with all of this is clarity and contrast. Artificial light creates a very contrasty uh, spread of light. So, for example, if you look at this stone here, it looks OK. But if I go to clarity and give a big handful of clarity, you suddenly see a lot more a lot more information there. and in fact you have to actually bring down the the exposure just a little bit more same on the wall the wall's looking pretty pretty clarity anyway but i'm going to just add a little bit to it just a little bit um, as you can see there i need to make sure these colors are balanced so i'm actually going to back the color off slightly from this one just slightly so that we've got a similar color as it flows through same over here i'm just going to add some clarity a little bit not too much now rock faces it can it can look quite uh, uh, quite textured so i'm also going to go back click back on this one on the ground i'm going to add a little bit of contrast in there as well yeah so um so there you go it's um i probably would crop this a little bit closer in because now we've got this big dark area on the left it, it doesn't lend itself so i'm going to go on the rule of thirds put the lamp on the rule of thirds I'm going to come up slightly like that and then uh, accept that crop now there is a lamp in the distance okay so we can we can do the same we can do the same with that that lamp um and i'm not going to do the full thing but what i am going to show you is is if we take um go back into masks and we go to this mask here and we select it and we duplicate it okay so i'm going to duplicate that mask and i use that mask down here or okay i'm going to make it smaller so it fits with this 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 lamp lamp that's down here okay what you'll notice is is that it needs to uh it let me just accept that a second it needs to be dimmer because it's further away the light levels will be less so what we need to do is uh, zooming in there we just need to bring down the exposure of that that lantern to get it to the right level so uh, let me just show you how we do that so we'll go to the go to the uh, the radial gradient and we're just going to back it off a little back off the color slightly as well and uh, back it so it's 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 not as bright so when we go back in so i'll accept that so what you see is is a light in the distance is still too bright so i'm going to go back into the masks there go to that that mask and i'm just going to bring it back even a little bit more I'll bring back the contrast a little bit and i'll bring back the exposure a little bit there we go and that's really important that you that the brightness is uh it is you know proportional to the distance i think that that's really really important there you go so hopefully that's helpful um use that technique for for lanterns um consider the color consider the brightness don't overdo it in terms of the brightness and color and also make the uh make the radial filters bigger than you think because light does spread out so um okay so i hope you found that it, uh, very helpful and um yeah uh, please subscribe and like the video if you did like it and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much.